like if they rephrase that and said you got to trade in a way that where your emotions are not dictating your behavior i would agree hey it's walter here and you're at the think profit podcast where we're going to help you develop a rock solid trading confidence and avoid the potentially endless cycle of system switching right hugh that's right we're going to help you develop a wealth mindset develop a trading strategy that fits your core personality and help you overcome the obstacles that stop over 90% of traders. All right, Hugh, sounds good. You ready to go? Yeah, let's do this. Hey, Walter, there's, there's this idea in trading that you should uh, remove all of your emotions while you're trading. So what do you think about that idea? I think that's like a euphemism for um, don't allow your emotions to dictate your trading decisions. So if we take that literally, then I would say that's incorrect. Like I wouldn't agree with that. Mm -hmm. But if you talk about what they probably really mean, which is, you know, we want, ideally, as a trader, you you don't want to be making an emotional decision. So if you think back to when you first started trading, or if you're a new trader, and you notice that you like have that feeling of like the market's getting away from you, and you got to get in because you're going to miss out. That's a clue, <laughs> right? That yeah. means, you know, that you're 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 operating on fear and greed. And so it's it's the same when you're in a really good position and you start, you know, thinking about um like I remember one time I was trading with this guy and I was in this trading I just watched him trade at his house and he was like, "Yeah, I'm just going to get out now cuz that that's that's my new kitchen." <laughs> so he was in he was in like this trade on the pound and he's like, "Yeah, I'm going to get out uh, cuz my wife wants a new kitchen and like you know what I mean?" Mm. So that to me was not he didn't say i need to get out because my trailing exit said it's time to get out he said i need to get out because he was doing the math in his head and he, that much money is going to pay for my kitchen my new kitchen that, I, that my you know my wife wants so i'm just going to get out right so like things like that so you, that's when you're not really following your strategy so i understand why people say that i think it's incorrect i think that for example personally myself what i like to do is i like to embrace uncertainty so there's that fear of uncertainty there's that fear when you take a trade that you're kissing this money goodbye bye bye there goes 2500 bucks right i'm taking this trade and it could hit my stop and i could lose 2500 bucks right or or it could be that it's going to make money and maybe it makes me 5600 bucks or whatever right the, the point is that's you know that's kind of the reality of trading and i think it's kind of cool when you get to embrace that like embrace the unknown Embrace the fear of the unknown. That's that living on the edge of the unknown is what traders do. So you got to get really comfortable there. And I understand why people say it. I understand why they say you got to trade without emotion. But I think um, what they re like if they rephrase that and said you got to trade in a way that where your emotions are not dictating your behavior, I would agree. Oh, yep, definitely. But but I don't think like. It's really difficult. Of course, you're going to get happy when you make money. Of course, you're going to get upset when you're in a losing streak. Of course, that that's normal. Whether or not that pushes your behavior, and that's the the primary dictator of your behavior, right? Mm -hmm. Like re like a classic is revenge trading. Oh, I lost all this money on the Swissy, so I'm going to go back and and I'm going to triple my my next trade size so that I can make all that money back. You know that sort of thing. That that is, I think, what they're talking about. If I were to rephrase it you know what What are your mm -hmm. thoughts on that yeah no i agree and i think uh two two things that, that come to mind with that um number one it's a very like <clears throat> macho male dominated wall street type mentality when you're just trying to like overpower everything and just like impose your will on everything and i think um that might be where part of that comes from so i think that that mentality you know it has its place in certain situations but when it comes to trading psychology i think that um it's 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 a little bit idealistic, I think, to be able to like overcome all of your emotions. Uh, and then number two, I think you want to do two things. You want to reduce the impact of um, events on your emotions. And then if you can't do that, you, then you need to um, be able to manage the emotion that you have. So um, being able to reduce the impact would be something like backtesting, right? Like if you have a losing streak and you look at your backtesting, you say, oh, that's a normal losing streak. So that reduces the impact of that um, that event. And then if you're in in the trade and you're in a market session that's not going very well, then, then it's up to you to kind of breathe and say, okay, you know, take your time. Don't rush this. You don't have to revenge trade. You don't have to give into FOMO. 
and um, I think that's that's the way it actually works. It, it in on YouTube or whatever on the on the internet, it's nice to say, "Oh, get rid of all emotion," um, but I think that in reality, it's all about minimizing the impacts and then dealing with what comes up. Yeah, I agree. And and real real money trading is real, there's no substitute for that. Like we can do all the back testing, get all of our data and all of our numbers, and that's brilliant. But the reality is, even if you're like, even if you're trading 10 cents a pip, you know what I mean? That's where the emotions come in when there's money on the line, even if it's like 15 bucks or whatever, you know, whatever your your first account, like when you're testing a strategy is. So I usually do around a thousand bucks, right? Like if I'm testing a strategy, that's what I normally would do, would look at around 800 to a thousand bucks. And you know, it's, it's, it's fascinating how much different it is, you know, mm -hmm. when you, like you get those emotions that creep up that just didn't happen when you were blowing through your back test from 2002 to 2019. Like, you know, you went through 17 years of back testing in, in two and a half months and, you know, you didn't like, it was nice to see the numbers move, but it's nothing with, like having a $5 loss. It's crazy, but it's true. It's really true. So that's I think why your brain, think your brain starts to extrapolate, right? Like, oh, this is a $5 loss. So that could have been a $5,000 loss or a $50,000 loss, right? And I think that's yeah. Like, on the other side too, like, oh, that could have been a $50,000 win. So I think that's kind of where that comes yeah. from also. 100%. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, Walter. Thanks. All information in this podcast is for educational and informational purposes only and is not trading or investment advice.